All right. Hi. Welcome to the uh, Out of Ideas podcast. I am your current host, and I am joined by Makai. Hello. What's up? What's up? How's it going? And um, Editor Macy. Hi. And today we're talking about bad, 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 bad video games. Awful ones. So, um, just off rip, what's some bad video games you guys can think of? Uh, Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, we're gonna have we're gonna have a bit of a disagreement there, considering that is like my favorite Bioshock game. <laughs> we have a whole video where we chat on that game. No, Matt, I think I found the person who needs to be there when I do another Bioshock video instead. We need differing yeah. opinions. That's gonna work because I can't do it. But it's too boring. It's too yeah. boring. I I could replay through the first two because I just released like the collection for free on Epic Games. Yes. So I have yeah. the remasters of the first two games. I can play through those and then play through Bioshock Infinite again and see how my opinion adds up. But I do remember liking that game a lot. I think I beat it like five times in a row. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you're going to do that, I wouldn't say make uh, those a video. I'd say play through them and then talk about them in like video essay format. I mean, yeah. you already have a Bioshock Infinite video up. You wouldn't want to go all the way back and then play them all the way up to the point. And when we've already shot on the game, like we all, we've already, you know, took a dump on I'm it. I'm so. perfectly willing to eat my words though. You see, the problem with Bioshock Infinite for me was almost entirely just I'm bad at following directions when they're not very easily given to me. So there was a lot of me wandering around to cut out. To the carnival sa- the carnival scene had so much sensory happening at this at once that it took us like and I timed it like 25 minutes to find the girl who is supposed to give you the bottle to get past that uh, robot at the gate but she's right next to him the whole time yeah we were really overstimulated actually when when doing that video and then it was like overstimulation while also being bored it was really like this weird oxymoron. I think- my, okay, Bioshock Infinite is a game that has a lot to experience and is very pretty and is very noisy. True. Like, we have to I definitely agree focus. that it's a pretty and noisy game, but I kind of think that was the whole point being like, you're playing as, damn, what's his name? Booker, right? Yeah. You're playing as a... No, <laughs> what his name is. No, I remember his name. Booker oh. DeWitt. That's literally his so name. We didn't even have the sound on. Uh, yeah. We talked about so, his name being Booker DeWitt. Yeah, so you play as Booker, and he's, like, in this area that he's never been to before, and it's, like, full of life and vibrance. So, like, there being huge crowds and a lot of things going on, and Booker just being swung from station to station, not knowing what's going on, while the player also doesn't really know what's going on, kind of helped with the immersion there, where it's like, yeah, you, you're in a new area, you have no clue what's happening. The Probably game was moving very quickly. This I'm was about to be a bad video game. Booker. Like, I'm way stupider than Booker. So he, like, it took me, like, 25 minutes per section to figure out just where to go next. And I feel like I could probably play it again now that I know it's going to be such a busy game, but the sound's going to be on, like, two. Yeah, I mean, that, you guys want to make that, that series of videos. I'm, I'm all for it. I, I just I won't be there. <laughs> Especially now that I'm, like, I know what the best setting is for me. But I but, will but say... But this is about bad video games. It's about bad video games. Bioshock Infinite is more fun to me than Tomb Raider. The newest, like, the newer Tomb Raider Fair. for the PS4. Fair. 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 Wait. This yeah. is about bad video games, though. Yeah, I wouldn't call Tomb Raider a bad video game. It, it's people... People feel... I feel like people are very, like, mixed on Tomb Raider, like the new ones. Because... Mm-hmm. On one hand, they're not really anything like the um, old Tomb Raiders. They're more closer to Uncharted than the other Tomb Raider games. But me, when I when Tomb Raider, the first one of the reboot trilogy came out, I remember picking it up at Walmart, just looking at, oh, Tomb Raider, I've heard of this game before. And I used to play Tomb Raider Anniversary on the 360 all the time. So I was like, okay, Tomb Raider. I bought it for $40, uh, took it home, played it, and then played it again because <laughs> I really liked Tomb Raider. And then people always say like, ah, oh, it's just like porn or whatever because, you know, hot woman and also she gets fucked up a lot. 
like a lot. <laughs> Macy, please remember to censor torture porn. When would you edit this? Uh, do I have oh, to censor wait. both words or just the word porn? Um, Probably just the word. Yeah. Honestly, I think it would be funnier if you just censored. Oh, <laughs> but, you know, whichever one floats your boat. Okay. All right. Yeah, I forgot. I can't say words like that. Anyway, so people people complained that you know Laura was getting beat up so much and saying that it was unnecessary. But once you look at the frankly stupid ending of the trilogy, it all kind of makes sense a little bit. <laughs> Wait, though. If it's like Uncharted in style, though, she's gonna get beat up. Yeah. True. I mean, yeah, if you look at... And I love how this was supposed to be about bad video games, but I guess we're just... Well, okay, off here's my problem, Matt. I'm not good at video games, so there's a lot of games I think are bad that probably aren't. Okay, fair enough. But, yeah, I mean... If you look at like Uncharted, let's say Uncharted Two, probably the most iconic one. My favorite, my personal favorite is Uncharted Three. But if you look at Uncharted Two, the opening scene is literally Nate with with a wound trying to climb out of um, a crash train hanging over a uh, Tibetan cliff. So like the thing about those archaeology major runs around the world type games is that you just get on the verge of death a lot in every cutscene. And and you can and you can say that you know yeah. uh, and try to copy Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider copies and try to, but at the end of the day they're just copying Indiana Jones. So like yeah. it doesn't really matter. It's just astrology majors or it's just I mean, astrology. astrology. Archaeology, astrology, majors, archaeology, like astrology. Majors, majors. That's a totally different game. What if I sit astrology. to astrology? <laughs> okay, okay. You should censor it when you just said it too. When you asked that question. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> what I know at least was probably a fun game, story wise, but sucks gameplay wise. Twisted Metal, and I think it's Twisted Metal too. Uh... But it just, I. Listen, my mom said to me, hey, Macy, this is a fun game. I sat down, and it ran like a slideshow. But, okay, mm, bad game. What's what's Twisted Metal? It sounds like a, like a mech-style game. Is okay, it? I found Twisted Metal because I watched all the cutscenes, but Twisted Metal is this sort of, like, racing game if you enjoy Saw and the Monkey's Paw uh, movie trope. Basically, there's this guy who will grant wishes if you can win his, like, super cool Fast and Furious death race. But every yeah. wish he grants, he, like, twists it to be evil. Like, there's a girl who wants to do a giant fashion show, who wants a girl who wants to walk the biggest runway in the world, so he she gets put on uh, the path of an airplane. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. Okay, all right. Yeah, give me one second. Guys, Twisted oh, Metal needs its own podcast PC. episode. Honestly, I like the plot, but it just sucks to play. But that's also because I'm not good at car mechanics. So when you have car mechanics in a video game, but also your game runs like a potato, wow. it's like no. No, but but bad games. Okay, bad game. Uh, like I can think of a few bad games. Um, The Sims. Uh, it's not really a oh, game. Oh. Um, at any of the 2K games, honestly, like Resident functionality Evil, wise, Resident they work, but they're not Evil. games. And they're not games. They're just not. Let's be honest. If you play 2K, you probably play basketball. If you don't take your ass outside to the park right now and shoot some hoops, game? 2K, yeah. Oh, I think all. All the video games where you play sports where it's not like a Wii motion controlled game. Yeah. Or bad games. Because why are you playing soccer in the video game? And you get, right. If you don't go outside, you're like, you need to, you know, if you're playing those games, just go outside. Just go play soccer. Go play football. Go play you basketball. Go, outside go play hockey. Or you pick up that Wiimo and nunchuck. Hey, why the fuck are you doing that? Don't censor fuck, though. Why the fuck are you doing that? <laughs> and, um, in, in, uh, in a game, you know, when you could be you know, climbing a mountain or some shit. I don't know. Just like anything but that. Like you could it, like this is why I don't fuck with the Sims because it's like just go live life. That's really <laughs> what the Sims is. Just go somebody in a pool in real life. Yeah. You know. Just go, just go kidnap someone's child in real life. Oh, I'm going to use some of these nine minutes to talk about the genuinely the worst game I've ever played on every front. Kingdom okay. Hearts Dream Drop Distance for the 3DS. 
Ugh. Bad my sleep, my sleep. And I love 3DS games. This was the only 3DS game I ever played that had genuinely bad controls, and I had like the Pixie Hollow game. Yeah. Um, Matter it's Kingdom fact. Hearts, so of course you know, confusing storyline. No idea what was going on the whole game. No map or bad map or really unclear instructions of how to get to the map. So I ran like three full circuits. Stupid blonde anime boy with a purple shirt who I didn't like. Matter of fact, I'd like to argue. Okay, bad game, right? Worst game, Kingdom Hearts 2. Simply because of how button mashy that fucking game is. Once again, don't censor fuck. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, the thing about, like, just like games games that were exclusive to your handheld sort of consoles yeah. um, that were vital to story information were bad. There's some that weren't vital, like if you had like a PlayStation uh, PS Vita or something, and you played like um, Uncharted uh, Golden Abyss, like, is that game good? No. Um, is it required for the, the story of the, the other games? Not at all. So that works, even though the game is bad. Another uh, really bad game that might have been fine uh, story mode wise, but was abysmal to like physically play. Pokemon Tournament was the Pokemon fighting game for the Wii U and the Wii, I think. Mm. It sucked. It sucked. I tried playing with the Wii U pad. I tried playing with the mouse and nunchuck. I tried getting the like the controller edition for the Wii. It's, you know, no, nothing worked. Just no, not done it. once. But I'm going to say it. Brawlhalla, not a good game. I don't care what anybody says. It's not a good game. It's just a Smash clone. And it's not even a good Smash clone. Like, it's not like, um, what was it, PlayStation All-Stars or something? Where it was like, it, it was like Smash Bros, but with just Sony characters. So in a way, that shit made sense. Because it was like its own little metaverse of Sony characters fighting each other. And Sony had popular enough characters to make that shit work. The fuck is Brawlhalla doing with its 2D animation Kung Fu Panda shit? Like, nobody is... Fucking with that, I've, seen, I've seen good 2D animated fighting games to compare Valhalla to because I'm a Skullgirls fan at heart and soul uh, and body. I, so I think when I Skull wouldn't Girls hate on Brawlhalla. And you are Brawlhalla? Like, I, I, I just think I wouldn't hate on Brawlhalla if, one, the recovery system wasn't so goddamn fucking easy. Um, and two, uh, the hitbox wasn't so fucking weird because it's 2D. You know, mm. hitboxes are easier when it's um straight up... Uh, 3D, especially with, okay, so also there's a lack of collision in Brawlhalla. Like, in Smash, it's like, if I walk up on you, in order to get past you, I have to dodge past you or jump over you. I can't just walk through you. But in Brawlhalla, you can just walk through somebody. It makes it, like, the hitbox. Right, and the the hitbox, it's it's like ass. It's like, I'm going to swing on you, and then you're just going to walk through me. Like, what the fuck? Ooh. I have... So it just doesn't work a treasure trove of awful games that have been awful, like, deep and deep in story-wise. The problem is all the worst games I played were dating sims. And not even, like, full-on dating sims where you can, like, not even, like, a honey pop where there's games entwined, but, like, a choose your own adventure novel. And I don't really count romance dating sims as real video games, but this will probably, there's so many that it probably has to be, like, would have to be a separate podcast episode way in the future, but I have a treasure trove of, like, if you can give me a noun and a place, I can find you a dating sim for it. See, and and, and, and that's my sucks. thing with things like dating sims, is they often just end up being this <laughs> twisted uh, version of somebody's cool. weird fantasy um, that they just want to live out. But, you know, and, and, and for a lot of people, like, okay, so let's take something, like, and this isn't a game, well, let's take something like Twilight, right? Um, I don't remember what the name of the person who wrote Twilight. Stephanie, is. let me let me look at my bookshelf. Stephanie Mayer. Stephanie Mayer, right? Clearly, she has like a a weird fantasy in her head with the, with the character of Edward that she created that she then wrote down and then made millions off of. You want to know? But what like, I'm if you really Stephanie Mayer, she's Mormon. Yeah. See, see, there it is. If you look into that shit deeper, that shit is weird. It's just weird. Like it's it's weird. Like like. I, I'm not going to kink shame you or whatever, right? If you're in the safety of your own home, cool. But if you are making multi-million dollar movies with Robert Pattinson as your heartthrob... Oh, I don't... I, I want to hold on to this information because it's off topic, but I gotta... 
There are two spin-off, not books, but spin-off book series from Stephanie Mayer about Twilight. One is Twilight from Edward's Perspective, and one is called, I believe, After Death. I own a copy. I'll find it later. And it's literally just gender-bent Twilight, where Belle's name see, is Bo and Edward's name is Edith. See, no. See, that's fucking weird. Like, that's just some weird shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's, like, she didn't even, I'm like, pretty sure. dedicate herself. She didn't even dedicate would... and gender-bent everything. Would... <laughs> I would assume she probably made that because let's be honest, Twilight doesn't have a male audience. <laughs> so she was probably trying to get one. After Death doesn't have a male audience either because she didn't change anyone's personality. Well, cause she doesn't know how to appeal to men, is the thing. The thing it's is, like- Edith is just Edward with booby. He's, she's still big and scary and brooding and, and, and Bo, we can't be okay. together. Well, I well, sparkle. I let, me, let me put it like this. How do you feel that about has a, the the male audience that the new Star Wars trilogy has is art it is to not only discredit art itself, but also you're you're giving these studios or these writers or whoever a platform to make things that aren't of quality later on. You guys want to play and, Twilight the video game? I found it. God, oh, no, God. no. Oh, God. I'm not joking. Yeah, let's, it let's do that there's for the two. shit post series. There's two. There's a Twilight Macy. video game, and then there's a Twilight scene at video game for the week. Macy, you know they gotta be dating like, Sims, right? Like, they've gotta be dating Sims. It's literally like those like old like books Disney would release where it's just the plot of the movie. This is literally just the video game. And it's for PlayStation 2, 3, and Xbox 360, and the Wii. Macy, you do... How? You do How do you what you want to do on your show, okay? <laughs> and maybe I'll, I'll be in that episode. Maybe I'll be in that episode. What What gameplay loop would you even have for a Twilight game? I don't know. It, maybe it's like a Sonic game, but it's Edward with Bella on his back. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. You play... Ev- you, the only characters you play are like people in Edward's, in Edward's, Edward's family, so like Edward, Alice, and Jasper. And you're fighting Lauren, James, and Victoria, and then like you play for the last level, Bella Swan. Oh wait, hold up. Tell tell us more about this after intermission. It's time for intermission because we're running out of fucking time on this Zoom call. Thanks for that, Mackay. No, no, we're not. Definitely not. We don't rep her at all. Number one, have you ever wanted to play as the Twilight villains? No. Now you can. No. Here's a fun little here's a fun little challenge for you to see like if this video game is really worth it. Just fun. name name them. Name any of the Twilight villains. No, I don't remember. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Literally like besides maybe I don't know, Lauren. Apparently their names are Lauren, James, and I in the girl one. The girl one. No. That's her name. Victoria. A girl. But I don't the, know my real problem are. is it labels the levels as Forks, Washington, Phoenix, Arizona, and Mimi's Dance Studio. Just those three. Uh, like Arizona, Martha. where Bella moved from? Arizona like, like, like those are that we n- didn't like really see anything areas. of? Well, yeah, because she moves back. For half, no, that's Florida. Oh, then I have no idea. Like, I, listen. Le- those are the level locations, but then there's like the like the little level chapter titles are Breach What's the Gate, Black Knight, Influenza, Whoa. Across what? the Hairpin. What's the, the level? The her heart. walking from her bedroom to her car to move? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's, what's the mission? This, the, the abduction of Eleanor is, which no idea who Eleanor is. The rest Break of the party. Me? Sacrifice. I want to hang myself. Which oh, will probably sad, have to censor really, that. Sad, real sad. Okay. I want. I want to end my life because there's a. Oh my video fucking game. god! The best video, the best movie video game tying game. There's two of them. <laughs> Surfs up the game. I don't care. Shut the fuck up. And Spider-Man Two. And those are the only valid ones. The rest are ass. There's no other good movie tying games. I'm sorry. I don't know. Have you ever played Hannah Montana the video game? I have. Thankfully, I spared That sounds whack as shit. I won't even lie. You're right. No, because well, no, no, thing. listen. It's the best of both worlds. I can justify. Here's the Fucking thing. Awful. I will say, <laughs> Hannah Montana the video game, actually, there's a game inside of Hannah Montana the video game I would like to recommend for worst video game ever. 
Inside the Hannah yes. Montana video game, there's another game. Yes, there's actually a lot. Let me explain. In the Hannah Montana video game is a mix of three game state play styles. Four gameplay styles. Talking to NPCs, shopping, dance mini games, and the carnival level. What the fuck? In a level, to get with the boy Hannah Montana liked, you have to go beat all the mini games at the white people carnival. What the actual fuck? And that is the part, that's the worst video game ever, is the, the section Actually, of Hannah Montana where you gotta beat all the carnival games. You have to do the stupid horse water game. No, there's a oh, worse video game. Yes? You just remind me, there is a worse video game, and it's quite literally the carnival video game. Oh, it's no. a video game that is a virtual carnival, and it's the absolute fucking worst shit I've experienced. Well, I mean, I had also, it on DS. You're biased. Why am what I is biased? up with so many games? To quote like you, that. dude, the circus is heaven, the carnival is hell. Uh, there's an episode of of Bratz, specifically uh, Bratz Teen, Bratz Kids, that I think would really have fucked with you because it was the horror episode. I fucking hate that episode. Yep, we're the one where they Sasha... go to the, 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 the carnival and they get stuck on the ride. Yep. No, no. Or remember the one. Did you just stuck... say Bratz? Yes. Yes. Listen, okay. I know this isn't extremely public knowledge, but the Bratz had movies at every stage of their life. There's Bratz Babies where they're like. Like like little little itty bitty toddlers. There's an animated a two D animated that was good and three D animated yeah. ones that were bad. There's Bratz wait, wait. Kids, two Bratz Kids movies specifically. One that's really good, one that's mid, and then you have like the normal Bratz teenagers and like Bratz girls. M- Macy, we'll talk about the Barbie and Bratz movies a different pod ca- uh, podcast, but. <laughs> But today, specifically, that fucking episode where the, the carnival one, where she gets stuck in the mirror. Literally, I was watching fucking um, Jordan Peele's Us, and I was like, this is a ripoff of fucking Bratz. <laughs> that's, that's the real shit. Or the one where the dog talks. That yeah. one wasn't really scary. It was just annoying. You're ruining my chances of getting a puppy. I have a very unpopular opinion about Jordan Peele's movies. Oh, what, they're, they're mid bad? as hell. <laughs> Except that they're what? They're mid as fuck. Yeah, like, they I are. Didn't enjoy it. You know, mid us, mid this new one's probably gonna be mama mid. Like, wait, are you talking I, I about? Wait, wait, did Peele. he make the? I don't know. Oh, the 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 one with the butterfly. What was it called? I actually kind of liked it. With the it you know a Jordan Peele movie because the whole gist of the movie is white people are just Satan. That's usually the gist of his movies. White people oh bad. God. Black people I don't think good. It was a, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, the one where you think it's a slavery time movie, but then you realize it's, I think it is Jordan Peele, then you realize it's uh, supposed to be a Civil War reenactment camp that had just been kidnapping black people. What's it called? That does sound like some Jordan Peele <laughs> Yeah, that shit. sounds like a Jordan Peele okay, movie. So but I, don't think, I don't think that's a Jordan Peele movie, but it sounds like a Jordan Peele movie. That sounds like the exact plot of a Jordan Peele no, movie. What, yeah, that's I think the like... weird thing is that he didn't make it, but I think he like was supporting the On director it? who did. Oh, yeah, no, that sounds like some Jordan Peele shit. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck was it called? Jordan, Jordan Peele's, uh, you know, whole, like, I can, I, you know what, we do this a lot on the channel, and I know, Makai, this is your first thing technically on the channel, so, yeah, yeah this is something that we like to do, though. I come up with bat sha- bat shit and insane plots. Antebellum, bat okay, insane. yeah, that's a Jordan Peele movie. No, no, it's Jer- Gerard B- B- Bush Christopher. Renz. See, Okay, really? Macy, help me out. I'm gonna oh, improv. Okay. I'm gonna improv a Jordan Peele movie. Okay, so I need you to give me um, a location and then a black actor. Texas. Any American movie? Uh, Texas, Michael B. Jordan. Lupita Nyong'o. No, no, not like a state. Like, like a a um. Western like, like Town, a very Michael specific B. Jordan. Place. Oh, Western okay. Town, Michael B. Jordan. Wait, what if I get less specific and go Europe? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like, like a McDonald's or some oh, crazy okay. shit like that. I got oh. you exactly. Then yeah. Walmart, Camp, uh, American Campground, Lupita Nyong'o. Wait, what was yours, Makai? Give me yours too. I'll do both. Walmart. Uh-huh. Um. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start with yours, Makai, because yours is funny. All right. So Tyler Perry, right? Investigative reporter, black investigative reporter. He, he he goes to, he comes to Cleveland to look into 
the riots at the Steel Yard Walmart. It's the worst fucking Walmart on the planet. And he he goes in there. You know, he's 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 working with um the Walmart employees to find out what's making so everybody angry. Um, a lot of a lot of ghetto fights. We don't know why. We we he looks into it and it finds out that the white manager of the Steel Yard Walmart is a part of an underground plot that that emits a transmission that makes black people angry and kill each other, but only each other. And this movie is Jordan Peele's uh, um, commentary on how black on black crime is the fault of the white man. <laughs> or really, I would say that the same thing, but instead of emitting some kind of transmission to make black people kill each other, a Jordan Peele movie would be more like any black employee that works there becomes brainwashed and like a corporate slave. And it's a commentary on how the white man and corporations exploit black people as employees. <laughs> Equally valid, but it's, it's not supposed to be very serious. Okay. Macy, you, what was yours again? And no, uh, Nokita. Said- she's already been in one of his movies. Yeah, but she's like, okay, two, yeah, two of his movies now. Fine, fine, fine. Let me switch places. I'm going to say, uh, Denny's. And Denny's, okay. Viola Davis. Okay, Viola Davis, famous food critic, goes into the local Denny's to 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 see what she can say, right? Goes into this Denny's. Okay, complete white management and staff, right? Very weird, but all the customers are black people because it's in a um. A, a poor neighborhood, a poor neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that what, what she finds out while investigating it to, to criticize this food is that they're actually peddling drugs all throughout the neighborhood from the back of the Denny's, right? And this is Jordan Peele's commentary on how uh, the poverty, violence, drug use, and literally any problem in the black community could just go falls back onto the white man. And this is why this podcast is going to get canceled on the first fucking episode. <laughs> well, here's the good news about getting canceled, Matt. I don't have a Twitter. You don't have a Twitter. Yeah, sure. Like, I don't Kai, have a do Twitter. do you use Twitter? No, I just How scroll through tweets. I don't actually post. If we're not on Twitter. True. Good point. How are, how are we yeah. going to see the hashtag? The hashtag... Uh, I, uh, out of ideas is over party Whoa. 2022 Whoa. if we're not on Twitter to see and apologize. Please. Well, hold on. Actually, forget. It's not a Denny's. It's a Little Caesars. That makes it funnier. And the movie is called Slice of Life. There you go. Mm. We're going to make a million dollars. We're going to make a million dollars. Oh my god. We've tra- traveled so far. I will say, though, I saw Antebellum and I saw Get Out and I saw Us. Antebellum has a quality where it's like, um, number one, it's not about all white people are evil. It's about specifically people who love reenacting the Civil War are crazy. Which okay. is a true fact of real life. No, I think those people just like muskets. No, because muskets are between, cool. There's a difference between collecting muskets and, <laughs> oh my God, I wish I was a Civil War soldier. Man, I wish I could have been in the Union. Man, I wish I could have been in the Confederate. Oh, if only that could have been me, you know? Okay, well. Yeah, but that's kind of like saying that people who do like Milsim airsoft stuff just yeah, really wish they were in the military. No, like I'm maybe they just kind of want to reenact it. I'm talking about people who specifically say, "Oh man, I would have loved to be in the civil, uh, be a civil war." I don't soldier. think I've ever heard anybody. Oh specifically yeah, say that's, that, uh, here's yeah. I don't think. I consider though, Matt, I'm half white. Oh right, I forgot about your racist dad. Just leave my dad out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I said it because there's out. nothing you can do to me <laughs> from here. But I do know I'm going to get a good bonking tomorrow. Pause. Um, but yeah, no, like. I don't know, man. Jordan Jordan Peele, if you're watching this, we didn't mean anything that we said. Please sponsor us. But if you aren't watching, fuck you. Come on, be better. Be better. You need you need Keen back. You need to just go back into comedy, bro. You really tried it. I, I appreciate it. Are you time. fucking serious? Oh, my bad. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, Tyler Perry, if you're oh. watching this, stop making movies. Please, no, for the Perry, love of God, retire. Tyler Perry, if you're watching this, make a you're movie done. where Medea you made dies. all of your money. Yeah, uh, Tyler Perry, if you're watching this, kill Medea. Kill Medea. Before Kill Medea and make a This Christmas too with the original cast. I don't care. 
Viola Davis, if you're watching this, uh, please hit up my friend Devana. Viola Davis. The fuck is a Viola Davis? Well, have you seen Suicide Squad? Well, there you go. Matt, I don't think Mike, uh, I don't think Makai and Devana can ever meet. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, who is Viola Davis? She is she, a famous black actress fair, that our good friend Devana is in love with. To be fair, I do think that Devana's love for Viola Davis is very, very irrational and has no basis at all. She thinks she's hot. That just happens sometimes. Wait, that's, wait, is Viola Davis the really old one? That's, that's like what? Isn't she on I'm thinking that, of someone. Crime, that lawyer show? Stop. I can name rattle off things she's in. You guys both know. I know movies and shows so well. I can name yeah, her whole what, IMDb. What, name something she's in. Um, uh, how suicide, to get away with murder. How to get away with murder. Suicide never squad. The help. Um, <laughs> the fences. Fences. Uh, fences. Never heard of it. Yeah, well, I don't I really watch expect you to that more, have uh, seen Fences, but she's in Suicide Squad. She's um fucking um uh Amanda Waller. Yeah. The lady who hires them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, her. Okay, I know who you're talking about. Here's the thing, Matt. You can just find people hot sometimes. No, I I don't care if she finds her hot, but it's like. That's like me just being like, oh, yeah, fuck, like, what would be Goldberg, you know? And then not really have seen much of That's who I was Whoopi thinking Goldberg of. Work. That's who I was thinking of. That's why I said her name. <laughs> yeah, when you said Viola Davis, I thought of Whoopi Goldberg. Okay. <laughs> That's who I thought you were thinking about. I've seen How to Get Away with Murder and Suicide Squad. And, okay, and, like, one of those things isn't good. I can't speak on the other one. But one of those things isn't good. Specify which one's bad. Speaking Suicide Squad, Squad is bad. bad. That's a shit movie. <laughs> it's a shit movie. The new one is fine, but the old one is so terrible. What are we, what are we some sort of Suicide Squad? Jared Leto as the Joker it's just ass. fucking terrible. Well, and girls just simple over him. He was great like, as Suicide Squad. Know. They did switch off directors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, people Ayer always simp one. over Jared Leto, and that's Ooh. fine and all, but I as a Joker actor, he's Leto. fucking awful. <laughs> Yeah, no, his version of Joker was so terrible, it actually made me want to do a deep ledger. so tatted? Where That's a great question. Ink? Joker's not cool enough to have sick ink. I actually, See, Joker is too cool for tattoos, is the thing. Yeah, I would rather, like, no, Jared Leto, he just he just didn't play Joker right. Like, his Joker didn't really feel didn't insane. He just felt like he was trying to be edgy. Yeah, he, he didn't like, play Joker. He, he, like he played like random he mob TikTok. boss with mental illness. Yeah. Jared Leto and whoever of Suicide Squad and whoever was Harley Quinn, whoever is Harley Quinn, when paired with Jared Leto from Suicide Squad. Now, really feels Marco like Robbie is good. good. Yeah, no, I think the lady who plays... Uh, Harley Quinn nowadays. I Margot think Robbie she, do, does a she does good really Harley well. Quinn, no, depending like said, on what type of Harley Quinn you like. She's a good I like Harley classic Quinn, Harley Quinn myself. When she's next to Jared Leto, they look like a TikTok couple. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, like Harley Quinn, right? Like You have new wave Harley Quinn, and then you have old wave Harley Quinn. I like old wave. I like Harley Same. Quinn, who was in the red and black suit Same. and was fucking mm -hmm. with the Joker and then got over it and, and yes. went independent. What I do, I like, like. I like new wave Harley Quinn, like post killing Joe Harley Quinn. The whole she dresses all modern, the ditch the black outfit, no. went fucking batshit. I, like I, I know I'm fucked with the, like a semi good guy. I like that midpoint that only happened in the comics, the Harley Quinn TV show, and the end of Batman the animated series. See, I hate the Harley the Quinn Joker TV show. And moves in with um, Poison Ivy. I hate the yeah Harley the Quinn Harley show Quinn so TV much. show. I actually kind of liked it. I thought it was funny. No, uh, it's like a but me, canon I, story. I like okay, it I, because it's in that period where Harley Quinn moves in, like with Poison Ivy. But that's the only thing. That's I a part of the reason why I hate. It. But I, I hate the Harley Quinn TV show in the same way I hate Teen Titans Go. Oh yeah. Yeah, they yeah. kind of ditch characters this. Characters are yeah. not fucking silly. They have tragic fucking backstories that you that you can make jokes about, but they're not supposed to be ha ha fart jokes. No, they're supposed to be like sick fucking you're depressed jokes, like. <laughs> You there's know, like, one, you know, there's one silly character, Batman character, I can say truly is a silly little goofy guy, but they never use him when they want silly villains, and it's Mr. Calendar Man. Calendar Man is not fucking goofy. I'm sorry, <laughs> if your name is Calendar Man, I'm going to never 
respect you. Thanks. But that, okay, I, I get that, but it's like when you look at why he's the fucking Calendar Man, it's different because his villain name is Calendar Man, but he's actually the Calendar Killer because of because of the, his gimmick. But like, it's like, and, and by that metric, it's like Mr. Zazaz. I'm not fucking scared of him when I hear his name until I realize he thinks that killing people is freeing them from their fucking mortal lives. <laughs> like, you know, these aren't. Goofy ass care. So like when you actually, Robin I think Calendar Man's real problem is that he's in Holy Musical Batman. Yeah, okay, but like <laughs> when you when you when you take like okay, Teen Titans Go for example. Let's let's run through the cast of Teen Titans okay. Go. You have Robin, Beast Boy, Cyborg, Raven, and Starfire, right? Yeah. Okay, off no rip. These niggas dog on Robin every fucking episode. Strangely, right? Question, which, I have a, I've had a question slash theory. Did in between Teen Titans Go and Teen Titans, did they switch which Robin was supposed to be Robin? Yeah, I think no. they did. Like, is Teen Titans Go supposed the to be the same dude? Robin? No, no, it's still Dick Grayson. So really? same guy, same guy. I thought, I thought the original yeah. Teen Titans. I thought they had the one that became Nightwing, which yeah, wouldn't make sense. Grayson. Grayson. Yeah, no, but in Teen Titans Go, they had an episode where Nightwing was in it alongside Robin. So how could they both yeah, be the same person? Yeah, the future. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, they did yeah. go to the future. Yeah, Never mind. Yeah. Okay. It's the same nigga. It's the same guy. But but my, here's my thing, right? They trash on Robin. They're like, ah, you like you little bitch. If you watch the original, they respect Robin so much. There's an episode where they're fucking bored as fuck because he's not around. Mm-hmm. Like... Like, cause he's just that guy. Like, but they're all that guy is the thing. In you the know, original, they were all that is, nigga. This is a comment on reboots, and this is something. Okay, it's not a reboot one, though. I, yeah, no, I'd no, hardly no, no, call no, no, no. Teen Titans Go a reboot. It was it's, more yeah, of a spinoff. Right, here's the thing, though. I count it as a reboot the same way. Like a I, count a lo- I gotta explain this. This is a theory I've noticed a lot. So, you know, I watched a lot of classic girl cartoons growing up, and you know, they're all about friendship, all about oh my god, we we are best friends, power of friendship. And what I've noticed about reboots of old cartoons is that they always make a friend group worse than the reboot. Yes, but like, okay, here's my thing, right? But but we, we still need to go over right. Like these aren't Joe characters. Remember, these aren't Joe exactly. characters. Robin's parents are dead. Yeah. Beast Boy's mom is dead. Yeah. Raven's dad is the literal king of hell. Mm-hmm. Starfire was literally at outcasted and enslaved. Mm-hmm. And Cyborg is missing his fucking body. Like mm-hmm. these aren't joke characters. Mm-mm. These are tragic characters. And to take them and make them and almost dumbing them down more as so. if like this is what little kids want. No, little kids needed to see the original Teen Titans because they taught actual oh, fucking lessons. I just remembered. Tara and Slade are both in Teen Titan Go, and Tara is also absolutely ridiculous and has none of that. Tara, number one, isn't even connected to Slade in Teen Titan. Tara Go. fucking dies in the original. Yeah. So they also, made Slade silly. I rem- I just remembered he was in it because of how silly they made him. Yeah, but like, when you get to the original show, you have amazing episodes where, like, Robin starts working under Slade. And Slade's like, I could have been a father to you when Robin changed his mind. And Robin says, I have a father. They never say who, but it's a good-ass show. So, you know, they say, I, he says, I have a father. Strike of lightning, show some bats. You don't need to tell us. We already know. We because know these that. aren't fucking joke characters. That's another well, thing. Well, over, the Justice uh, League hate, almost hate the Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. Like, they do not like them. Yeah, and I mean that's that's almost true to comics in a sense. Like well, they got not a, over like, that general like like dislike of clashing of like two good superhero teams. It's like you threw a pie in my face, you stupid idiot child. Yeah, it's like we just fucking hate you because of what. I, and they make they Batman. just hate them because they're immature. Which right. is and it's like kind of like makes sense. Rachel, they're not immature. It's like they were granted At all. these facilities by these um. Like they, they may be teenagers, but in the original, they very much acted like you no. Know, but they know when they know when it's time to go to work, though. Is the yeah, thing. which is even even with how great the original Teen Titans was, I still prefer Young Justice because those niggas really knew when to get to work. Oh, yeah. Like they they I knew when the stakes were up. Young Justice, but Young Justice every episode was like, whoa. If you have what? HBO Max, I suggest watching it. We're up to season four nah, bro, now. I four. had it on DVD. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm saying, well, even, I'm saying now, if you get, or, you know, bootlegged, who cares? Um, you oh, know, oh you can talk about piracy on the podcast, but I can't? 
party. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't even remember that. Hmm. So, hmm. but you know, I'm just saying, like, it, you probably won't eat too. But I'm, it's, 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 you are so crispy right now. Like, okay, Young Justice, right? Let's talk about Young Justice. The, the cool thing about Young Justice, thank you. Um, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 the, the cool thing about Young Justice is you got to, the, the viewers grew up with those characters. You know, well, when you have something like Teen Titans, which is good, I love Teen Titans, the characters stayed the same age through the entirety of the show, and there wasn't really a consistency. It was very episodic, and, and the episodes were out of chronological order, if you watched them. Young Justice stays in chronological order, and it shows the, the, the creation of a team and building them up to completely tearing them down as they go through real-life situations. By season two, aren't they good at Wally was dead at the end of that, by the end of that? He was dead, like straight up dead. They haven't brought him back. It seems like they're itching closer to that, but they haven't brought him back yet. Superboy is dead right now. We know he's in the Phantom Zone, but to everyone else, he's dead. These characters are doing. Beast Boy is literally depressed, like actually, like doing pills to press. Beast Boy is popping pills in this show. You know, we see these these people deal with loss and triumph and victory and hate and love. And, and, you know, losing people. They, uh, like um, Aqualad's original love interest, she dies, so now he's dating uh, this, um, the, the original Aqualad. He's dating the guy who would have been Aqualad in, like, the other original universes. And he's Aquaman now. We see this guy go from Aqualad to becoming Aquaman and one of the main centerfold leaders of the Justice League. We see Wally die and Impulse take up the mantle of Kid Flash. We, we, we see Megan and Connor's relationship going from so together and then broken up to engaged and then married. We, 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 we see these things, you know, and, and watching these people grow as you get older, like people who watched Young Justice when they were a teenager are now adults who are getting married. And, and now they see their favorite characters getting married too. And, and, that's, and that can be a big deal. So when you take that away from the, the kids of today, these, these little, uh, let's, let's say, six to ten-year-olds watching Teen Titans go, there's no growing with that. There's no graduation unless you, unless you start watching um, the, the older Teen Titans. But at that point, you're moving in reverse, you know? The it, there's no point where it gets serious. Go is still airing. I did right. not it, know that. Right, I, I, and I, I, would, I believe you. No, they didn't end it. They need to end it, but they're not. They're, they're not because it's bringing kind of money. SpongeBob in it, you know. I don't think it's gonna end for like six more years. Well, that's what I'm saying, and it's like, why? I, I mean, I, I, I had a reason. <laughs> um, no, not technically. They like had an art style change, but that's because it's been airing for like lo- older than me, like twenty years or something. Yeah, yeah I've been recently um, rewatching like the entirety of Amazing World of Gumball. So, you know and that that is a good show. They that art style change was very subtle, but like I was watching the show and something just fell off while I was watching the earlier seasons. But I mean, once the season two hit and they changed the art style, man. And I'm pretty sure it's it's over now. Like that show is over, but they knew how to end it in a way where they could bring it back and it would still make sense. But it, it closed. Um, personally, oh, you I, haven't I, seen the uh, little thing that they've been doing. No, and I, and I don't care enough to. I don't. I don't have cable anymore, so it's you not like when I just turn on the TV and go to the young channel. Young hero movie wasn't that good. And what I convinced myself it didn't exist, and I imagined it for quite a few years. What is it? Uh, next Avengers: Heroes of Tomorrow. Whoa, hold on, that movie is good. What the fuck are you on? Mm, it was my first ever Mar- Marvel movie, so that could have been it. But I do remember yeah, thinking I think, this is just okay. ass. What? No, that movie was absolutely amazing. The the art style was oh, was art. interesting and innovative. The the script and the story made total sense to the point where they got their own comic line uh, story. Focal. I have the first issue actually um, of that. Now, that's a very good movie actually because it, it it's not technically canon to the main Marvel universe. Technically, like the six one six. But there's nothing bad about that movie by any means. You want to try to justify it being bad? 
I I'm mean, gonna make you it your word. Very okay. concerned. You, this, you, I can tell this is very important to you. So it's I will hold my peace on this one. What's important to me is is people getting the credit for the good work that they did. Oh no, it's not ugly. It's very beautifully animated. No, no, not just the not like art. It. The, the, well, if you don't like it, that's fine. I don't care if you like something or don't like it. But as long as you can, it, it is effectively. Uh, uh, you are so crispy. Ruh -roh. Uh, writing on how people's powers work and which Avengers would be dead all made sense. Oh my god, will he stop? Yeah, so my fucking dog is being a little asshole right now. But yeah, so like, okay, I want you to, to tell me to tell me why you specifically didn't like it, and and I will try to see see like what's going on. I'm gonna trying say, to understand. It's been a very long time since I saw that movie. But I, I watched I it two days ago. Whoa. I remember nine-year-old Macy, what really stuck out as unlikable was I just did not mess with that bitch James. And I don't remember what I didn't mess with about him. But you didn't mess with James? Yes. James specifically. That nigga was, was just... kind of the most active nigga on the team, the low key. Well, yeah, no, it's not that he wasn't active mm -hmm. or he was useless or something. He was just extremely unlikable to me, and I don't know why. I'm going to be honest with you, Matt. remember that. As, as more podcast things happen, I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm ever speaking about the objective, I will say objectively first. Beyond that, okay. I'm completely subjective and speak. I'm going to go out here and say stuff like, Jim, Jim and the Holograms was infinitely better than Barbie and the Rockers. Is that probably the objective truth? Ooh, mm -hmm. Is it what I believe in my heart? Yes. Hot take. Pineapples on pizza, baby. Pineapples on pizza. <laughs> Pineapple the Out of Ideas pizza. podcast. Uh, that's crazy. To, I mean, I don't think it's ridiculous to say that, you know? But the thing I'm is, not going to touch on it. I'm always going to have that style of subjective take unless I you really know? pause and go objectively, you know? Yeah, but here's my thing. I just, me personally, I don't like things that are clearly targeted at a specific group of people. That, like, like this was made for you. You what? know, like, other people can enjoy it. But this was made for you, and I don't well, mean like I mean, Barbie stuff where it's like this is for girls. For me, like that's I don't different. Even like superhero movies, all like that. Right, but I'm. But that's not what I mean. I mean like made for a specific demographic, and I'm not talking about like, well, like it could be really race or like religion. No. I, I'm gonna drop religion because that, that's a whole different minefield. But like race, um, or sexuality, or um, you know, gender. Like, I don't care, like, if you're, like, Barbie movies are made for girls. Because it's, like, mm -hmm. I can enjoy those. When I'm sitting with my sister and we're, we're going nostalgic, I can enjoy that. Right? Because by that vein, every Disney princess movie is for girls, too. And I don't think that's the case. Um, but if we take... Oh, yeah. Like, every uh, Disney movie princess definitely isn't for girls. Because, like, I used to watch... I think I've watched, like, every one of them. <laughs> yeah, they're all, they're all good. The it's the thing. They're all quality. Um, yeah, yeah Frozen. Fuck Frozen. Frozen is Frozen. Ass. Frozen is easily one of my favorites. What the fuck are you on about? Mulan too. No, no, Tangle, Tangle the Superior to Frozen, bro. I don't care. Mulan Two doesn't exist. We don't talk about it, and whoa, we ignore it. Whoa, whoa, pause there, buddy. Let's Mulan Two is kind of okay. We're talking about Disney sequels now because I got the list. Bro, it's Mulan like, Two was a direct to DVD sequel. They didn't even put fucking. Oh, whoa, whoa, all, whoa, of whoa, all of them were though. All of them were. DVD sequels. Because all of the it was bad because it was a direct to DVD sequel. But then so was Cinderella Three: A Twisted Time. But that's not even the most valid one to say is good. Lion King Two well, is objectively two. good as well. Lion okay, King but two. Lion King Two. Lion King Two is objectively good. A uh, Brother Bear Two is also very good, but. The, even if you want to hate on Mulan 2, the songs were bangers, bro. Well, I'll say I wasn't plot wise super sad about Mulan 2, but no, no the not. songs! No, it's, but the I songs think, were heat. Yeah, I think there's only been, even in the Disney sequel realm has good music. The only Disney sequel I can think of that had bad songs was Return of Jafar. I, okay, I would argue, right? I would argue that lesson number one from Mulan 2 is good enough to be in the first movie. 
yeah. it wouldn't make sense to be anywhere. But it is good enough to be in the first movie. It's not nearly as serious as the first movie songs. Let's be honest. Man Out of You, banger. Absolute banger. Girl Worth Fighting For, absolute banger. Reflection, absolute banger. Especially when um, uh, Chris, uh, what was it? Christina uh, Aguilera. Uh, is that her name? Mrs. Aguilera. I know who she... Yeah, yeah. When she sang it, that shit hit me in the heart. But, like, if you really want to talk about bad movies, talk about live-action adaptations of Disney movies. And then we're looking at some bad shit. Talk about Beauty and the Beast 2. Beauty and the Beast 2? Fuck that. We're not even going to touch on Except that one. Except for the one villain song, because that was pretty good. Fuck Beauty and the Beast 2. Fuck live-action Beauty and the Beast, honestly. I honestly, like I like. I did honestly. not like the live-action Beauty and the Beast at all. Hold shit was up. terrible. I will not defend anything about that movie except for the song Evermore, which is in my bones. I won't defend that, but I will defend Gas Gaston. That they because they they took the song and they twisted it in a way that made it still work. Yeah. Like, yeah, actually, it does make sense for Lefou to be gay because he absolutely dick rides Gaston twenty four seven. So, like, that was a welcome is, change to me. Beauty and the Beast set up this ex- Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast together set up this expectation for me for upcoming Disney live actions or Cinderella Tommy, it was still going to be magical and pretty and gorgeous. And then Beauty and the Beast told me, even if the whole movie is not to your liking, they're going to keep the villain songs being absolute fire. Also, and um, then they were like, we lied to you, sorry, here's Lion King. J- they John, made, be prepared, sorry, Dad. John Legend, they did. John Legend and um, and Ariana Grande's rendition of Beauty and the Beast is good. That's a good duet. I don't remember any of the songs from the live action movie at all. It's the same songs from the original, yeah, but you know, I don't remember them. Evermore. I don't remember them. <laughs> also, I don't even um, think Emma Watson can't original. actually sing very well, so that pissed me off. Wait, who? Emma Watson. Emma Watson, oh, yeah, no, the That's contemporary why, Disney Potter actor. Wasn't a musical, you know. Yeah, she just wasn't. She wasn't. You know. She was wasn't made for that. She wasn't made for that. She's a wonderful actress. She's a great actress. But her singing, she she just ain't with it like the other the rest of the cast was, you know. But as for Frozen and why I think Frozen isn't that good, um, honestly, I saw the villain a mile away. That shit was so yeah. out in the yes. open. There's a just, but let's there's be honest something though. Something I can say about Frozen though. The original soundtrack for Frozen that came out before they like had the plot set up. A lot of their deleted songs. Frozen could have been the best, one of the best 3D animated Disney movies. I okay. know the base plot in my bones because I listen to only, all the original songs. There's only one song in Frozen I don't like, and that's Let It Go. I hate that fucking I knew song. you were going to say that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I we weren't, we weren't going to love, love Let It or... Go. We weren't going to have Let It Go. Let me tell you something about the original but, plot. But we did, though. It doesn't matter what the original plot was. Well, it's about I'm the finished you, product. Like, someday, I'm going to fight Disney in a fist fight, and I'm going to win, and I'm going to kill Fight Disney house, itself? And I'm You're going to lose. The original plot. I'm going to... Because in Frozen 2, number one, Elsa was going to be the villain. And I know people are like, oh my god, evil Elsa. But it wasn't that Elsa was evil that was going to be the fun part. It was going to be that she was going to be evil, and Anna was just going to leave. Like leave her alone and be like, li- like once you lift winter everywhere else, my you can mind your business on the castle. Because the movie wasn't about like let it go. Everyone made it about let it go in the end. It was originally oh. about how bad Elsa's parents and Anna's parents messed up. Separately two songs. Like that. Two songs I don't like actually. I don't like the song that Olaf sings. Fixer Upper. Oh. No, Fixer Upper isn't that bad. Fixer Upper, I can I can let that one slide. But at the end of the day. Tangled is better than Frozen. Mm-hmm. It's Except better. They went with the original plot because in the original plot, the whole thing was they had entire songs, not about like you know you want to build a snowman. I, I still don't think it would be better. Elsa loved being a big sister and how much she adored being with her little sister and how like amazing being a big sister was. And as a big sister, I'm biased until her parents were like, "Oh no, your power, you are getting out of control, and we're gonna rip that away from you now." See, I, I still don't Which, think that's that's that would have made it better though. Is because because no, then then it goes from like it goes from let it go being like like the whole conflict goes from I want to stay in my ice castle. I don't care if I froze over the entire kingdom. Go back down. I'm going to accidentally kill you. Okay, M- Macy, I I see what you're doing. I understand where you're coming from, 
But at the end of the day, it's the finished product. It doesn't matter what they plan to do. It's like saying no. Doctor, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. It's the best Marvel movie because of the deleted scenes that they cut out. I mean, it's work. It isn't. It's a bad movie if it's a bad movie. It's, it doesn't matter what they with, were going to do. They yeah, I gotta them. agree with Matthew. It's really about the finished product. It, you can right, judge right. something based on the potential. But I'm not, like, I can't not really. it's good. I'm okay. saying it could have been good, and I'm mad at it. Okay, something. imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine you have a gun, right? Okay. And there is a guy trying to kill me behind me, right? You tried to shoot him, and you hit me. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's the thought that counts, the intention. Because you just shot me. Frozen's good. I know Frozen's You bad. shot me with your bad movie. I'm saying there was a, there's a little square of Frozen that I want to take out and keep for And myself. I'm saying that your square doesn't matter because it doesn't exist. So it's not That's a valid arguing thing. point. It does. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Was it made? If it's it wasn't made, animated. it doesn't exist. <laughs> they dropped it. It doesn't exist because they deleted it. It's not real. It's not canon. And if it's not canon, it's not real. And if it's not real, it doesn't count. So, Disgusting. I mean, blame Disney. Blame I Disney do. at the end of the day. Well, I'm saying, like, I, don't know. I like Frozen. That was an point. <laughs> I like Frozen as it is. It was a good little movie. I kind of liked Frozen too. I I didn't like Frozen too. I, I think thought Fro it was I don't. I haven't even mid. seen Frozen too because by the time it came out, I didn't fucking care. But if you want to go to right now, I'd watch Tangle 2 right now. I pay money um, to see Actually, there's. I gotta say, typically I don't like it when Disney makes a spin off TV show based on. I've seen the show. It's okay. I, I, I liked it. I don't like it when right. Disney makes spin off TV shows either. Because with a TV show, you're releasing an episode, or in Disney's case nowadays, like a full season, like every six, seven months, so they don't really have the time to animate it as beautifully as a movie. Yeah, I, it's like, I, don't, it. I don't like it because then they downgrade it to 2D animation. The and show it's was kind down. of ugly, but the Little Mermaid to spin off TV show actually was kind of enjoyable. Like I said, I, I can't touch on that. I haven't seen Little Mermaid spinoff show. I've, I've only seen the Hercules spinoff, and I hated that. Oh, yeah, no, uh, that was ass. And, and, and so it's like... Like I said, if just like it just doesn't exist, if 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 it doesn't exist, it's not a valid arguing point. Rather, you know, like I I could go on and on about how uh, Ubisoft is actually a good game studio because of how they planned to make Watch Dogs one, but they didn't do that shit correctly, so therefore they're ass. Okay, let's be honest with Watch Dogs One. The only bad thing about that game was the graphics, like um, the graphics getting down. I could argue that there was that there was uh, some other bad things, like the fact that they tried to incorporate the free running system in a way, but then they didn't give you much to free run on. Uh, so I only know about Watch Dogs Two, and I can tell you, Watch Dogs Two sucked. It okay. Didn't. I, I cannot say that it's. Okay. I can't say I, that I, like I can't say that. I can't that, agree. I, I can't agree. I hated it so much. I gave you my copy, dude. <laughs> that was Watch Dogs One. Was it? Yeah. Oh, then it's I right actually, there. It's Watch yeah, Dogs no, One. I was right. I, 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 Watch Dogs Two is in San Francisco. I mixed them up. Yeah. Watch Dogs Two Watch had Dogs really good characters. Car driving system works. I um, not Watch Dogs Two had three really good characters and then they shafted at the black guy you can name other watchdog characters you can name watchdog characters yeah in, in the second them. one i don't even uh, yeah. remember the main character's name no, I but i do remember the personalities marcus oh so i did have the main character's name right never mind yeah so my favorite is wrench though i love wrench wrench yeah wrench is the comedy release but he <laughs> had kind the of mask. a serious arc he's not with the mask yeah the mask is video game someday. All of them. No idea what that was, Matt. Fast and Furious video game. I don't like racing games, so I can't even talk about them. Well, I don't want to do it for the racing part. I want to do it because if you hit civilians, there are no consequences. What game are we talking about? In the Fast and Furious games, if you're not actively in like a chase mission, you can just hit anyone on the road. There's a Fast and Furious game? Multiple. So it's just family the game. Yeah. yeah, no, they came out with one like a year ago. Really? Not even. I don't. I haven't even seen the newest Fast and Furious. I haven't seen the 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 last five Fast and Furious movies. So. You seen F nine where they go to space? Do they actually go to space? Yeah, no, I'm not joking. I watched the movie with my uncle. Do they go in a car? Yeah. I fucking hate Fast and Furious. They, they duct tape the window shut and they give the guys some like homemade 
astronaut suits that they duct tape the holes closed on. Yeah. You're lying. No. Dead ass. Nope. All knuckles. Another fun fact. You know how they killed the Asian guy in Fast and Furious? He's not dead. The last Fast and Furious I watched was Tokyo Drift. So... I, I, I couldn't go any like farther than that. The only Fast and Furious movie I've ever watched was F9. I was technically the last Fast and Furious movie that always hops and shot, but that wasn't really Fast and Furious. What? Uh, you know what? That I was two niggas time. from Fast and Furious. Because a lot of movies do this. If your movie relies on emotional value by... if And if its only level of emotional value is supposed to be recognizing characters from older movies, if that's the only way to get emotional value, it's not a good movie. True. I can agree. So I think that watching Fast and Furious and every emotional moment banks on you seeing a person going, Oh my god, you're back. Which, oh my god, you're which, alive. Which is why Endgame yes. is one of the worst Avengers movies. Yes. It's not a bad movie. Yes. It isn't. But it but it is if not the worst, one of the worst Avengers movies. Yes. The best one being Infinity War, probably. Mm, I guess. The second best being the first one. Yes. I would say that Endgame is one of the least memorable. I yeah, yeah, because because it was exciting in the moment, but after the fact, I was just like, "Wow, shit happened," and then I went home. Yeah, I don't really remember much from Endgame. I just remember enjoying it. I watching yeah, it. I just remember <laughs> shit Cause happening because it was fan service the movie. But then it's like no way home. I remember that I should vividly like. Like, my nigga is coming out of the portals and shit, like, all of that. But also, like, actually, the only part Spider-Man. of Endgame that I can sufficient, as it, the, the only part of Endgame that I can sufficiently remember at any point in time is right when the portals open, um, you know, after the compound is destroyed, mm-hmm. and then, um, after, and then that to, like, the end of the battle. And that and that's like where my mind caps out. But my thing, my main one of my main issues or, or grievances with the MCU when it comes to the Avengers is I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the Avengers went downhill as oh, soon as they yeah, moved no. out of the tower. Um, as soon as they moved out of the tower. Because here's the thing, I'm gonna say this from uh, someone who activated with uh, uh, interacted with a lot of specific parts of the fandom. To this day, a lot of the fan base has not moved on from the tower era. There are still, like, the, I hate to say the word, tell me if I got a censor, Matt, to this day, majority, like, of the fan fiction and fan writers, they're still stuck in the Tower era. If you Google Avengers on in the fan fiction, you're going to get majority Tower era, Tower era, Tower era. Because in, in comic books, in comic books, characters live forever. Because they're written on the paper. They do not have to be filmed. They, we, I don't have to worry about renewing RDJ's contract mm-hmm. because he's getting old. I don't. So, in comic books, no one's selling fucking Stark Tower. Nope. Like, sure, there's Avengers Mansion and Avengers Compound and all of that. But, like, the tower is still, like, a I'm focal point in the, in the mythos. At so, when you get rid I've of observed- that... No one cares about the mansion. People will do people do more compound than they do tower, but it's tower, it's compound, it's literally anywhere else, and then it's mansion on the very bottom. No one cares about the mansion. No one cares about Avengers Mansion, but I'm just saying, like it exists. So it's like the the tower, it, and it's and it's cool because it's almost like the what Stark Tower or Avengers Tower is to Marvel is what the Watchtower is to DC. I mean. With stuff like that, though, you really got to go to which part is more popular. Like, it, obviously, the, the Avengers Tower is going to be the most popular one because that's like where all the movies and stuff take place. And well, not just that, but like, it's like where not, everyone most always people is. Don't. Yeah. And there's like, as someone who stopped watching specific Even in video movies, games. movies way early into like, I watched everything else, but I didn't watch a lot of Avenger movies after a certain point. A lot of the stuff I got, I th- I didn't realize the tower would stop being used when it did, because everyone was still was still putting their cute little like, oh my god, they're still in the tower, and, haha. And the best and the best moments of the Avengers movies happened in that tower, mm-hmm. like in Age of Ultron, the party scene, like even after the party scene when they're all just trying to try lift Thor's hammer. That's what you want. That humanizes your characters. That's what makes us care. You know. Because that's what makes it believable that they work together so well in the battlefield. Me seeing them trained is like, yeah, well, then at that point, they're effectively soldiers. 
but that's not what they're supposed to be. Not even Captain America is supposed to be a soldier. The whole point of his character is perfect man, not perfect soldier. He's a, like not a perfect soldier, a good man. The Avengers animated series is really good to me because I, my, I. Uh, Avengers Assemble, yeah. Huh? You heard about Avengers Assemble, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, the, I got the Disney XD Marvel Batman Universe has, was actually good. Batman has tricked me into calling everything blank the animated series. But I liked it because I like when the Avengers are friends. Like, that's my favorite parts are when the Avengers are, even when they're friends who aren't, who aren't, who are not rocking at the moment. I like when they're friends. And, and they do some good, good storylines that, that show the, the friendship. Like when um, the episode where Tony gets turned into a kid or uh, when um, Peggy and Howard end up in the future um, and, and they reunite. Th- those are those are quality episodes. There's, there's plenty of more. Or like how you get crossovers with like Ultimate Spider-Man, where that weaves into that, and you have Spider-Man learning a lesson because now he's joined the Avengers for like um, a month's worth of episodes before deciding, no, I need to leave my own team and going back. I've been it's told like, this is a hot learn take. Lessons. I've been told. I don't think it really is. I think people agree with me, but I've been told it's a hot take. Go ahead. Avengers MCU movie Hawkeye sucks way more than. A lot of the animated or com like it's the worst Hawkeye. Well, not Hawkeye. Bad. That's weird to say because it's almost implying that Hawkeye, in, in and of himself, is a bad character. No, and he is. It's him. more so that like and his like least enjoyable iteration of him is the movie. I. I well, I, my problem with that is when we make statements like that. People will agree, and then they'll point fingers at Jeremy Renner, who is the actor, even though he plays his role well, quite no, well. I don't think it's the actor; like he acts. He's no, like, I know you don't. Know, but I'm saying when people hear statements yeah. like that, that's where they jump to and they go and, and mob hate on the actors and harass them when they haven't done anything wrong. They just read what was on the fucking paper, mm-hmm. you know. And not everybody has the the creative vision to to just improv a lot, like maybe RDJ does in some of his scenes, because he has that. RDJ personality, which will get you some places on the set, is um. There's there's a line I can think of, like um. If you watch Captain America: Civil War, which was practically an Avengers movie, but we're gonna skip past it. You know, um, picture of who these characters are. You know, like the the Hawkeye Uwu dad stuff in the comics didn't even start until after Jeremy Renner's uh, interpretation of the character, um, or rather, uh, the MCU's interpretation, not Jeremy Renner. Uh, and so. Like, just stuff like that. Like, there wasn't a lot of maybe Cap is a bad guy storyline um, before the MCU, really. You know, So like, people agree with me that there was a lot of that in the MCU. A lot of what? Of not Cap being a bad guy, but that maybe Cap is a bad guy. Well, okay, so we know Cap isn't a bad guy. Bad guy. Yeah. And I meant like extreme bad guy shit. Like yeah, no, there was a I, I, comic book storyline where he was like Hydra, you know, and yeah, shit like that. It's not like a superior Captain America, you know? Yeah, no, but I'm saying like Captain America in the MCU is portrayed incredibly well by Chris Evans. Um and by the and by the writers, really. I mean, it, it's he's and I, and I hated the idea that a lot of people were like, you know, like, ah, like, why would he do that and all the Civil War shit and everything? But I'm like, that happened in the comics, and it was way worse in the comics. Mm-hmm. Like, niggas died. That is the one thing, like, I did not know Miles Morales was present for the Civil War, but I... No, he's present for Civil War Two, not the first one. Yeah, I, I didn't know he was there for, like, any of that. And finding out, like, people wanted him on the chopping block was like, oh, man. Captain Marvel actually tried to kill him because oh, of a vision that she misunderstood. Like, that made my, like, I... I had felt like Captain Marvel was like, you know, more like Captain Midville. But then, like, I saw that. I was like, hmm. Bruce Banner died. Hawkeye killed him. If you ask me, Captain Marvel has the same issue as Superman. She's just kind of too powerful to be interesting. I think that you you said that because you're ignorant of good Superman comic books, which isn't your fault. My favorite Supermans are the one where you kind of just let him do his, like... I like Justice League, but I also like Superman, where no. it's just See, him being Clark Kent and Superman and dealing with all his own stuff. Because Superman works better than Captain Marvel does, mm-hmm. because Superman is humble. He's not and this Superman, arrogant, egotistical that, bitch. I really, you know, I think a lot of people, I don't really are just me, like, superheroes with civilian identities are just more fun. 
also Superman fights people who are on his fucking level. Yeah, Zod. Like Captain Marvel doesn't have anybody on her level unless they have like a power stone or some shit. I like, don't care much for Marvel's chosen alien race. They're okay. Captain sucks. She's uh, terrible. She's a terrible character. She makes terrible decisions. She's the worst. I can't believe Spider Man let her hit. Uh, but then again, he just be pulling bitches left and right. That's my nigga Spidey for Spider Man let who hit? Uh, Captain Marvel. Oh, it. All right. Let's let's be honest. Who let who hit there? No cap. Uh, Spider Man let. Like, Captain Marvel. Spider-Man Spider-Man Captain Marvel. I don't even know which Spider-Man. Spider-Man let Captain Marvel hit. No, Peter Parker. It doesn't make sense for Miles Morales. He's underage. No, I didn't mean Miles Morales. I didn't mean like which universe number. Six one six, the main okay. universe. He let Listen, her dude, hit. I never know which comic universe we're talking about unless you say like oh, six one six. I'm like, yeah, okay. You gotta hit him with that web fluid. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta hit but him. But also, with that listen, web I'm gay. I don't find Captain Marvel like on paper like any of the character designs where I go like, oh wow, you're fine. Spider Man let Captain Marvel hit. Well, I'm saying Spider Man just pulls bitches anyways. Like, ah, literally. No, nah, like, like wow. really, like mad bitches. <laughs> like, you can't name an unattractive woman that that Spider Man is fucked with. And I mean physically unattractive. I don't mean mentally. Morally, ethically. Yeah, or or morally or ethically. Imagine being ethically unattractive. Black cat is ethically unattractive. Wait, when you say black cat, are you talking about like short white hair, black suit, fluffy? Why short white hair specifically? Well, isn't that how she looks like in the animated series? Who gives a fuck about the animated series? I. That's the only time I've ever physically seen her. Are you talking about the new one? Maybe I don't. Listen, it's been a while. Are, you, are we talking? Are you talking about the new one where where Peter goes to a, a smart people high school and he's an arrogant little shit? The ones who, where who like, just, they really, know it all? like like really he's really tight with Harry Osborn like on screen. See that that wasn't a good enough explanation. Uh, I'm just gonna Google black cat and I'm just gonna see the first picture that. Looks no, like no, no, no. Uh, we're we're gonna figure this out without Google because I would know. I would know. Okay. When when it's when the, the title one, shows up. Oh, oh, it's the one that's kind of a blend of 3D-ish animation. Are you talking about the MTV Spider-Man, bro? I, I almost feel like I'm talking about I don't think the, she's in that show. the Disney XD one. Yeah, okay, so there there's two Disney XD ones, right? Ah! When, show me. Sorry. You found it? Uh, No. I'm I'm going to figure this out because I used to see clips of this all the time, and now that I Google Spider Man Black Cat, I am only seeing this woman with extremely long hair. That's what I'm saying. So but like, it's like you're, you're not the girl I saw. No, you're probably thinking about okay. So when the, my friend is called the title of the show that you're thinking of, right? The, do you know what the title of that show is? I just know it was Spider Man. Because there's three. There's three main ones. There's like three main ones that people <laughs> like. There's four technically. Five, well, whatever. The ones that you probably would have seen oh. are spectac- Spectacular Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, it has to be the newest one because the animation is ass. Well, it's 2017. Yeah. And and fucking Ultimate Spider-Man's animation was better than that. The newest well, animation is this? That's, that's Marvel Spider-Man. It's the newest one. It's bad. Ah, thank you. It's bad. They make Peter an, an asshole, little shit. Who, who goes is, to a, like I like the jacket, but I prefer the ponytail. Uh, she's just uh, and, and her being a teenager is really weird because like she doesn't really she never really did shit when, when like she wasn't a, a villain back then. We didn't even know who she was. She didn't exist until Peter was of age, so that, you know that they could you know the teenager so he could, so he could web her up. That's another thing. As someone who sees like a lot of people like talk about like their favorite movie, so many people forget that majority of the times he is not in high school anymore. And people are like, oh my god, he's just a high schooler. No, he's not. Only if you like Tom Holland is he a high schooler. He's not a high schooler anymore. He's he's done with high. He's been done that with high school for forever. Is living with a job sometimes and a wife sometimes and paying his own apartment rent sometimes. Sometimes, and sometimes having a daughter that did get retconned. 
sometimes. But majority um, of the times, he's literally not a high schooler and hasn't. No, been this for nigga quite is like twenties. This man can drink and can drink, and, and he slash, doesn't. Not like and this man can drink and drive and rent a hotel room himself and vote. Yeah, he doesn't. But he can. He could. He could. And like, it's like. Also, that, speaking of Spider Man, something I've always hated was like the Andrew Garfield is too handsome and cool to be Spider Man. But it's also, it's also like Spider Man's not always a loser. That's another big like. Yeah, well, my thing is he's not a loser ever to begin with in that sense. Like, Peter Parker's not popular, but there's plenty of people, people who aren't popular. Some it's like, people are just. It's like he's not a popular guy. It's a, in some, in a way, he was popular. If you read the first issue, like the very first issue, Amazing Fantasy number one, Flash Thompson, who is Peter's bully, and girls invite Peter to go do shit with them, and he practically says, "Fuck you, I want to study," and that's why <laughs> niggas don't like him. Like it's not because he's he's like this loser that we're shoving in lockers and shit. That sh- that iterations came later. That's such a Danny Phantom thing. I, <laughs> I know what you you mean, but like. It's like it's like some bull. Like that's not just that's just not something that that like like Peter Parker is isn't popular, but he is cool. He he knows how to handle. That, sorry, handle is not the right word. Yeah. That would have came out really sexist. He knows how to talk to women correctly. Exactly. It's like, but it feels like mm-hmm. there's been this wave, re- like no, I don't know if it's recently, but it's like there, every teenage superhero has to be a bully loser nowadays. It's like no, they don't. There there is an issue. Some people of, are normal. There's an issue of um, Spider Girl, which is the run about uh, Peter Parker's daughter taking on the mantle. Uh, I was about to say, there's, is Spider Girl series... the daughter or yeah? No, not Anya, the other one. Oh. Um, the daughter, uh, May Mayday Parker, right? Mm, yeah. So she, there's an issue, a couple of issues of that, where she goes back in time. She gets sent back in time, and she has to team up with um, her dad, right? She has to team up with Spider Man, right? And Peter invites her over to study because she he thinks that she's cute. You know, classic timey-wimey bullshit. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, mistaken identity because of timey-wimey bullshit. Um, a little bit of a back to the future. Yeah, she goes to this nigga's house. All of the bitches from this nigga's school are there. Mary Jane is there. All at once? Betty Brant is there. Liz Allen is there. Yeah, because these hoes want to study. They want to study with Peter. You know, Dang, Flash really? should have been rolling up to the studying no. session. They're 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 trying they're trying out to be Peter's girl. That's what it is. And so, I know I'm sick of the the he's too cool, too handsome. Because Peter Parker's never been unattractive. That was never his M- No mo. more teenage super losers who no te- ah! super losers. No, I'm going to wow. say that no more teenage super losers. No more no more superheroes who in their civilian life are like are like getting shoved into lockers. No. I'm tired. See, I'm the thing her. is, that's like most people. Like most people Downstairs. aren't super cool or super popular. So when it comes to trying to make a superhero that people relate to, no one's going to relate to the super cool well, I don't, guy. I'm not saying they're going to be cool and popular, but some of us are normal, you know? Well, some of us and, aren't and like popular or losers. Some of us just mind our Yeah, but people. normal is boring. <laughs> People won't watch just someone going about their normal I mean, life. What's really like interesting about plug. Peter Parker's life besides his, his love interest? Yeah. Nothing. He's a reporter who got bit by a spider. He's not a reporter, actually. He's a journalist. Uh, not He's not a journalist. journalist. He's a photographer. There you He's go. He's a Same fucking shit. teenager. He, 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 he starts off as a teenager when he gets bit, yeah. right? This nigga does not have a job job. His job is being fucking Spider-Man. Then he realized I can make money off of taking pictures of myself. So he Tell does that. Tell me more about J. Jonah thought, Jameson, honestly. I thought that, I thought that I Spider-Man's photography thing was an internship. No, it's not an internship. He's, he just does freelance. Yeah, so he's not like on the payroll. It's just when he brings in photos, he gets paid for them. Because J. Jonah Jameson wants pictures of Spider-Man. Yeah. So the okay. So the thing about J. Jonah Jameson in the comics, he's he's the same but different. This thing has tried to get Spider Man killed before mm-hmm. and shit. But he's also like, protected Peter Parker with his life before, so it's a funny balance. True. Until the uh, the comic book where Peter revealed to Jonah that uh, he is Spider Man, and um, they're cool now. 
show. Yes. There is actually I an alternate universe where J. J. Jonah Jameson, Jameson became Spider-Man. And he's a terrible Spider-Man because he doesn't do anything except for get some people out of the way of harm. But then he lets the police handle the rest. I'm like, I wonder how many officers have died in that universe because you wouldn't fucking take down the rhino, dumbass. You know, he's like, property damage. I'm like, get good, and then there won't be any property damage. That's the whole point of Ultimate Spider-Man, the show. Ultimate Spider-Man's arc was so cool in that show because it starts off in the first episode with him being Spider-Man for like two years or a year or whatever. And he fights this guy, and there's tons of property damage, right? Right. So Nick Fury shows up, and he's like, yo, you need to be trained, nigga, because you're not handling this shit the right way. At the end of Ultimate Spider-Man, the very last, at the end of the first episode of Ultimate Spider-Man, he says, you know, blah, 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 I'm going to learn to be the Ultimate Spider-Man, right? You get the show title. Moving on. At the last episode, he fights the same dude as he fights in the first episode and then takes him out in, like, three seconds to show that the passage of, like, of this, this, these seasons weren't for nothing. Like, he did become the ultimate Spider-Man, and then he moves on with his life, and the show ends. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Right? That's a full circle thing. No other Spider-Man show has, a, has a, a, um, to have that full circle thing. They've all just ended abruptly. Um, I think the Spider-Man musical. Stop. Stop right there. Yeah, no, that definitely ended abruptly when the fucking actor fell off a 30-foot stage and broke his ribs. Yeah. There's nothing funny about the Spider-Man musical. But there's lots of things funny about the Batman musical. That's not officially licensed. Okay. So we can't talk about it. Is Lego Batman officially licensed? Is. Lego Batman is officially licensed. It's Lego Batman. Yeah, it's doesn't Lego trademark Warner... Batman trademark. Yeah, doesn't Warner Brothers like make all the fucking Lego games? Yeah, but actually. Wait a minute, though. It... Well, no, they also T- have the T- DC T- games license. Does. TT oh. Games does. They don't make all of the Lego games. They make all, all the DC ones, though, that are yeah. Yeah. They also make the Harry Potter ones, don't they? Licensed. Yeah, but that's because it's them. Then how does it have Calendar Man in it and not get sued? If what? If Holy Musical Batman is not officially licensed, how is Calendar Man in it and yet it didn't get sued? By that by that very notion, you could say, how is Batman in it it doesn't get sued? Mm-hmm. The thing that's is, a great it didn't question. get sued because they didn't make money off of it. Oh, okay. They couldn't sell tickets, so legally. So that's why. <laughs> Buying illegal tickets to Holy Music. Yeah, get, get debunked, true. Macy. Get ratioed. <laughs> Aww. You tried it. You tried it. I wouldn't let you get away with it. Luigi. <laughs> well, yeah, no. So I don't know, man. Like. The Spider-Man musical is a tragedy. Um, the holy musical Batman is illegal. Uh, Can you know, we have nothing in the world? God. I mean, Marvel Universe Live is a thing. Yeah. They even that took was actually really good. Avengers High. Avengers High was a cool video game. Oh, you mean um, on uh, the, like the mobile game? Yeah. It's yeah, I, I got down with that. I got down with that. When it was I out. liked yeah. it a lot. It, it was an interesting take on the characters that wasn't disrespectful. And also, it, was just like, it had really good high school designs. Because with a lot of shows, when they go for like a high school or kid look, it's like the kid, but then the logo's on a t-shirt, and that's it. Yeah, but it was like, yeah, it's Iron Man, but like most of his gadgets where you start off are just like on his yeah. hands and shit like that. It was that, good. They didn't just make him and... smaller and put him in an Iron Man t-shirt. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Or like Captain America, it's like, yeah, he dresses like Steve Rogers would, but he carries a shield with him, you know, so. And Loki was swaggy as hell, too, Loki. but we're not going to get into that. Even when Loki's not Marvel Loki, Loki's just always full of swag. Like, Dislight Loki, full of swag. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, guys, what a time. What a time we had. We you have know. not talked about the original. We kind of cut Mike like- Mackay out of the conversation. What? Well, huh? okay, so the idea of the Out of Ideas podcast isn't to talk about the, the prompt. It's to right. get the ball rolling with it and then just go wherever our brain goes. Let's and that was really yeah. incoherent, and I have no idea what we're going to title this one. Yeah. Um, this one was mostly about superheroes. In the end. Mm, lightly. Well, what about but... that whole part where we talk about Jordan Peele? He's not a superhero. 
Thank God. There, there's there's the, the, the name of the podcast episode. Jordan Peele's not a superhero. Oh, wow. We are going to get Twittered on the first day. Yeah. All right. Um, so it's been fun. It's been a good episode of the Out of Ideas podcast. If you made it this far, um, I love you. Say I love you back in the comment section if you made it this far. Um, I'm your host, Matt. Or Maddie, I'm this this is me signing out with Macy and Makai. Thank you for watching. Join and us good night. next episode where we talk about Bratz versus Barbie versus Jim and the Holograms versus Monster High. That's not decided yet. We'll see. Please. I have not watched any of those. Perfect. Well you better An study up, boy. Party. No, he's the unbiased party. I'm the unbiased party. <laughs>